Hi, good evening and welcome to another season of Ask the Doctor. If you stay tuned tonight, you're going to save some money on prescription drugs. Cool. Good evening and welcome to a show of Ask the Doctor. Tonight's guest is Dr. Jennifer Lewis, board certified internist. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Gene. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks for coming. Tonight, we're, uh, the topic you chose is generic drugs and how we can save medicine as consumers. So tell us a little bit about generic drugs. Well, generic drugs are basically just as good as most brand name drugs. And they're a great way for patients to save money. And there's a lot of misconceptions about them out there that I'd like to talk about tonight. Okay. Let's use a, an example. Of, an example of a prescription drug would be bare aspirin. Right. Bare aspirin is a great drug that's used for a lot of different medical conditions, and a lot of my patients are on aspirin. Bare aspirin is basically the brand name that a manufacturer gives aspirin, whereas the generic form of aspirin would be acetylsalicylic acid, which is just a chemical name describing the chemical makeup of the drug. So when you talk about a generic medicine, you're basically getting a generic name, which is the chemical makeup of the drug. Of all, the only thing I can remember about medical school, aspirin is probably one of the best. Just describing the chemical. drugs ever. That's what I remember. <laughs> it decreases your risk for colon cancer, so they say. Decreases your risk for heart problems, strokes? Heart disease, stroke, colon cancer, peripheral vascular disease, a lot of great uses for aspirin. Okay. Uh, but that's, you know, and I misspoke if I said, because I can't remember what I said 10 seconds ago. Uh, it's a brand name. It's not a prescription drug. So let's talk about prescription drugs. Um, in reading this stuff, our, our good friend Kim Menko got us all kind of uh, nice articles off the internet. And uh, one of them said that one of the most important or the, the biggest uh, product on the market as far as uh, drugs is uh, like Lipitor, things those uh, cholesterol lowering agents. That's correct. One of the most commonly prescribed medications in my internal medicine practice. I mean, we treat a lot of conditions, but high cholesterol is an extremely common one. And cholesterol drugs are a great example because when they first came out into the market, they were very expensive. And until recently, almost all cholesterol medications were brand form only. And a generic form of a cholesterol medicine called Simvastatin recently became available. And I think that illustrates the amount of money people can save with cholesterol lowering drugs. I, as an internist, I am very shocked to see what my patients are spending per month on their prescription medications. And I think a lot, of, a lot of doctors don't realize the cost that patients incur when we hand them a prescription. And I've, over the last several months, and well, years actually, have come to, to see what, you know, and appreciate what patients, you know, have to go through. And now with the availability of a lot more generic medications, I am seeing that a lot as patients come in to me and ask me what on their list can be switched to generic. And with all of the, specifically a lot of the pharmacies advertising on TV, the $4 giant eagle prescription list, the Walmart $4 prescription list, everybody has their low cost generic medicine programs. And I often get handed a list uh, at, a at an office visit saying, doc, which drugs on this list can I substitute on my list? So it's a very common scenario. I'm glad you brought that up. As I hand you this list, Kim, <laughs> Kim uh, also got that for us. It's Blue Cross and Blue Shield out of Ohio. I'm sorry, out of Oklahoma. I was in Ohio yesterday. Not for long, though. Um, my daughter plays college golf, and I was in Indiana. Went through <laughs> Ohio. It was a 
kind of flat actually. Uh, but what's interesting about that blue cross blue shield thing out of Oklahoma is you can see if you could just say one or two of those drugs and if uh, on the column on the right it's their brand name and the column on their left is like the generic <clears throat> and the price difference is, is astronomical just pick one. It is unbelievable for example Prozac, a very common medicine to treat anxiety and depression. Brand name drug, and I think these are costs per month, $169.49. Cost of the generic version, fluoxetine, $2.85. Another common drug, <coughs> Cardizem CD, often used to treat some heart arrhythmias and high blood pressure, $147 a month. The generic version, Diltiazem, $21 a month. Significant difference. So the patient's going to come in and, and say to you, Doc, uh, you know, the pharmacist says I can save this much money, but I'm worried because if it costs more, isn't it better? That's going to be a patient right. question. We don't have phone in tonight, so I have to put myself in the patient list. <laughs> a very common scenario. I do have a subset of patients who just do not have the financial means to afford all their medications and they just want everything generic. And there's the subset of people that I also see with the same concern, the misconception that a generic drug is not as good as a brand name drug because it's cheaper, or it, they're not getting what they pay for, it's not as effective. One of the most common misconceptions that's out there. But the bottom line is generic drugs are manufactured by the same pharmaceutical companies who manufacture brand name drugs. Um, they're just brand name drugs who have gone off patent and are now available for a lot of the different companies to manufacture at a much lower cost. And the FDA has regulations about generic drugs. The generic drugs are held to the FDA, same standards. FDA, by the way, is Food and Drug Administration. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> yes, the, the United States Food and Drug Administration has very strict standards for generic medications. They're all held to the same standard as the brand name drugs in terms of safety and efficacy. And they are expected to be of bioequivalent to the brand name drug. Now there is a little bit of a caveat to that because the, the Food and Drug Administration's definition of bioequivalence does have about a 20% variability when it comes to prescription drugs. So what does that mean? <clears throat> Probably nothing in the, long, in the long stretch of the situation. Right, and I have had some people that have researched this issue and they bring that to my attention. Well, the bioavailability and bioequivalence of the generic drugs is not as good as the brand. <laughs> There's no way to, to study that or prove that. But in, a long, in the long run, for most conditions, it's not a difference. What it basically means is that a, multiple different pharmaceutical companies can manufacture fluoxetine or generic Prozac and each pill or each manufacturer can have about a 20% variance of how much drug is actually in each pill. So it may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer at about 20%. But there's no, nothing to show that that affects the clinical efficacy of the drug. Well, the people that bring that up to you obviously sat in the first row of their <laughs> high school and college classes, where I tended to gravitate toward the last row, and especially in medical school. And uh, I think that the, the easy answer, as you've, you've put it besides, is you can test, there's an endpoint that you can test. If they're on an antihypertensive, you can take their blood pressure. Either it works or it doesn't work. Right. Uh, if they're on a cholesterol lowering agent, you can check their cholesterol level. <laughs> it's either lower or it's not lower. It's very easy to monitor for the clinical effectiveness of generic drugs. Um, so, Mr. Smarty Pants, don't ask Dr. Lewis those goofy questions. <laughs> <laughs> Come call me, I'll talk to him. But I think it is, it is a reasonable you know, question and concern because I have found differences in switching people from generic drugs. And one other point I will make is, yes, sometimes that bioequivalence difference does make a difference. Um, for example, you brought up cholesterol-lowering drugs. That was our initial example of generic medication. I have had situations in my practice where I've switched somebody or someone has asked to be switched or switched by their pharmacy to generic medication and their cholesterol, I check it, it's not at goal anymore. They might need a slightly higher dose. I have had those situations as well. You mentioned blood pressure medicines. Yes, I have had situations where I've had to increase the dose of the medication slightly, 
But for the vast majority of patients, the generic drugs work just fine. So. Aren't you forgetting something? You want to say hello to the kids? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, it's okay. Of course, I have yeah. to say hello to my kids. Hi, Matt. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> it's mom out here. They're, they're behaving really well back there. It's a family-oriented show here. <laughs> Speaking of family-oriented show, I would be remiss without saying that tonight the Steelers play. It should be a snooze or everybody in bed by halftime. And uh, the Pirates, oddly enough, have finished yet another losing season. They're ahead of me. I think this is my 10th season, and they're at 16 losing. So we're hoping to really go and set the record. I, I think, you know, 19, 20, 25 is not out of the realm <laughs> of possibilities. It would be a, a, an amazing record. Um, okay. Back to, back to medicine. Oh. <laughs> Sergi Goncher is going to have surgery. He's going to be out four to six months. Sure. Okay. Back to that was our sports update. Bummer. We occasionally <laughs> do these during the uh, Ask the Doctor show. Uh, as far as prescription drugs, interestingly, I saw that approximately after the age of 65, five out of six people are on at least one medicine. And survey says that a half the population is on three or more drugs. So. It can cost you 40, one of the articles said $40 per more per prescription, which is a significant savings per month, as you had said. Um, do you have anything, you know, do any of the patients come in, are they concerned that they're going to get some different or more unusual side effects from the generic drug versus a brand name drug? Do you, do you get that at all? Yes, I do. And it's the same concern of clinical efficacy. But again, the generic drugs are held to the same standards as the brand drugs in terms of clinical side effect profile, efficacy, and safety. So I tell them all, you know, if you're going to be switched to a generic medication and with, if you're going from a brand name drug to a generic drug, it's important to see your doctor after that switch has been made. Because a lot of times pharmacies by law are allowed to substitute generic drugs for certain classes of medication unless the physician writes brand medically necessary on the prescription. So if you see that your pharmacist, your local pharmacist or your mail-in pharmacy switches your medication without, you need to let your doctor know about that. Because again, like Dr. Hamill was saying, you probably should come in within a couple of months of that switch in order to have your cholesterol checked, your blood pressure checked, your sugar checked if, it's, if you're a diabetic patient, it's a diabetic medicine. And one more important class of medicines that also gets, I've seen get affected with a switch to generic is actually thyroid medication. Because those are levels that have to be monitored very closely. There are a lot of different things that affect thyroid levels in the bloodstream. And if you get switched from brand name Synthroid or Levoxyl to generic levothyroxine, again, 90% of the time it's going to be a, an equal efficacious switch, but you should have your thyroid levels checked. But so with any of those medical conditions, very important to see your doctor after a switch to generic medicine. Okay, so. uh, we're almost halfway through the evening tonight. And uh, again, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jen Lewis. In case you turned off Katie Couric, as most Americans seem to be doing this time of evening. <laughs> um, Dr. Jennifer Lewis is a board certified uh, internist and uh, been in the area about a year, about a year. Works with Dr. Jeff Gretz uh, over at the Waterdam Surgical, Waterdam, sorry, Waterdam uh, Medicine, and uh, their telephone number hopefully will pop up on the bottom of the screen if you'd like to get a hold of Dr. Lewis. We're talking tonight about uh, generic versus brand name prescription drugs and how you can save money. Uh, do you see any problem with insurance companies, um, or are, are they all different as far as allowing you to switch a drug if the generic is not working for it. Let's say that the one person that this stuff doesn't work. Do you, have you had any problems with that at all? Not usually. The vast majority of insurance companies tier their drugs in terms of the, they encourage people to use the generic medications first. And they usually have, as most people know, a certain formulary that we have to follow. A certain formulary of drugs is a group of drugs, several drugs for each condition that an insurance company will cover at the lowest copay. If you go outside of their formulary, then you have to pay a higher copay. I think most people are familiar with that concept. But if I try somebody on, and this has happened, a generic cholesterol medication, and I can't get their cholesterol to go with the generic medicine, yes, I've often have, had to switch to a branded medicine, 
And you have to go through a what we call a prior authorization process with the insurance company. And it's usually not too much uh, trouble for the patient. It's just a lot of paperwork <coughs> for us. But I have to do what's best for the patient. So I go by the numbers. And the extra paperwork is worth it to get somebody's cholesterol to goal. But that usually doesn't happen that much. Okay. Very rarely. Um, you were also going to mention uh, how people that are either low income or you know, uh, fixed income seniors might be able to lower their cost of medications by contacting your office. That's correct. The, the average diabetic with heart disease in my, in my practice is on at least 10 to, 10 to 12 medications. I mean, it's, it's that's shocking. Sta that's staggering, yeah. It really is. And when you think about all the medications and I look at their medication lists, I've learned to, to ask them, are you, are you okay with affording your medication if they don't ask me? You know, I always check about compliance. Are you taking your medication? And I'm surprised to hear that a lot of people are very honest with me and they say, oh, doc, I take this one every other day because it's the expensive one. Or I, take, I take, cut this one in half because it's the expensive one. And if you're doing that kind of thing, you need to let your doctor know. And if you're not taking your medication, you need to let them know why, because there are certain things we can do to help you receive the medication you need. One is, again, looking at your list, seeing if there are any generic prescriptions that can be safely substituted. And the second is, if you have branded medication that you need but can't afford, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies do have patient assistance programs. And we have the information for those patient assistance programs where you can get lower cost or even free medication from the pharmaceutical company if you meet certain criteria. And we have all those applications for the contact information at our office. And I have a lot of patients who have taken advantage of that, whether or not they've just retired, lost their job, gone on disability, whatever the reason may be, it doesn't matter. I just want to see them get their pills. And many of the pharmaceutical companies have the patient assistance programs that I think a lot of people aren't aware of and aren't taking advantage of. Well said, well stated. Um, one thing I did notice in this uh, review that, uh, as I said, Kim was able to get us, was that it, the average cost to bring a drug to market is over $800 million for one drug. So depending on, you know, what the drug to it, they'll get a patent for X number of years where they have the brand and the brand name for, let's say, it's Lipitor. company has to put in as an example and, and that's why they get to do that you know so it's it's easy to look at and say well these drug companies are making all this money blah 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 but uh, you know the bottom line is they you know they put out a lot of money you know uh, up front in that cost and one of the few times you'll hear me you know stick up for a big insurance company or a pharmaceutical company but when it makes right. sense we try to that on the consumer too. Um, we pretty much, uh, anything you wanted to say about the generic versus brand? Because we have a couple other topics you wanted to cover. I mean, I think that just about sums it up. I mean, I think, you know, the, the take home point is that generic medicines are safe and effective. Mm -hmm. The reason why they are cheaper is the fact that they have gone off patent and are now a lot of different companies and now there's competition to sell the drug mm -hmm. um, and the side effect profile is the same mm -hmm. and you brought up a good point you know shop around giant eagle wally world that's what we call wally world is uh, <laughs> walmart sam's you know call around because you might be surprised and or shocked at, at the price difference their generic formularies are for the most part People have brought in the list of, Doc, can you switch me to one of these drugs? So I've gotten to look at a, look a lot of them over. And again, so I think the take-home point is to consider generic drugs if you're having trouble affording your medication, to talk to your doctor and see your doctor if a pharmacy or a mail-order pharmacy switches you to a generic medication that your doctor didn't prescribe. 
and to just talk talk to your doctor if you have mm -hmm. trouble affording your medicines. That's the take home point. Okay. And the other thing you you mentioned briefly, we went over it is some uh, certain uh, companies you can send in a mail order check with your doctor. You can get a mail order ninety day supply. Uh, you know, there's currently some legislation because. Yes, uh, oddly enough, it's a political year, and oddly enough, there are people arguing back and forth about mm -hmm. whether drugs from Canada should be, you know. Pretty much the same. Ubequistan. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, it's not unreasonable to look at it. As, as long as I think it falls under the guise of the FDA, I think they do a really good job in that, in that guise. Exactly. I have a lot of patients, and there are a lot of Internet pharmacies out there with the Mail, mail order pharmacies that your insurance company endorses, it's a pretty safe bet. If you're buying drugs over the internet from out of the country, it's out of the guise of the FDA. You have to be very careful about that. Um, but again, if that's something you're going to do, check with your doctor and make sure he or she knows what's going on and what you're, what you're taking. Unless you want to hit so. baseballs farther, you know, because then Kind of some internet pharmacies internet that pharmacies and help some you out people there don't well. even know it's the clear it's the cream we don't know it's just but the other somehow point all of your prescription medications to your doctor visits because with these generic names that's the other point I think I would like to make <clears throat> a lot of them even the branded names are hard for patients to remember but now that most people are on generic medications there are some patients they have these very long biochemical names that I'm finding a lot of people can't remember so it's helpful to bring all your pill bottles or at least a list of all the medications and the dosages to every visit because with pharmacy interchanges and different manufacturers, drugs can get changed without your knowledge and without the <coughs> physician's knowledge, it can affect levels and the monitoring of your certain disease states. So, uh, Especially as you brought up the, uh, with the thyroid medicines, things like that. Yeah, I've that seen can really that. Make you, that can really change your symptomatology too. Uh, again, Dr. Jennifer Lewis is here tonight. We're talking about prescription uh, drugs um, to bring all versus uh, generics. Uh, the other uh, thing that you wanted to bring up uh, this is in the flu season. Um, you want to talk oh, a little yes. bit about that? <laughs> Definitely. Um, I had a lot of phone calls already into the office about whether or not we have flu shots. Um, this is the time of year that we start have them available, have them available, and it's a very important point in terms of saving yourself a lot of trouble with the flu. Who should get the flu shot? Right now it's recommended that you don't want to get everybody over age 50 get the flu shot. <laughs> I just saying. You're grinning over there. I know. Everybody over age 50 and people under 50 with any chronic health conditions such as diabetes, uh, cough, cold, diabetes, heart disease, um, even hypertension. If you're in work amongst the public, um, school teachers, where you're going to get a lot of exposure. Um, healthcare professionals. Healthcare professionals, absolutely. A lot of people don't realize that. Influenza is still in the top 10 leading causes of death in this country. And the people who are at highest risk of dying from influenza are the elderly, people over 65, and babies under two. So if you come in contact with anybody in those age groups, so parents of infants and small children, if you have family members that, who are elderly or visit nursing homes, I think there's very few people who should not get the flu shot. And if you're unsure of whether or not you need one, Again, talk to your doctor, see if it's right for you. But I highly encourage everybody to get one. If you've ever had the flu, you don't want to get the flu. For younger, healthier people, it's just a lot of uh, hassle, lost work time. It takes several weeks to recover. The one year that I forgot to get my flu shot because I was too busy, I was down and out with it for at least two weeks. And so wow. I can honestly say that don't I've get had the influenza. Don't get the flu shot. You don't want to get it. And they're covered. And antibiotics don't help with the flu. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. That, that's the most common phone call we get, probably 20 or 30 a day, to call in an antibiotic for hey, a cold doc, symptom. I need, a, I need some antibiotics. Yeah, and they don't work. You will get better from a cold. So. <laughs> the, uh, 
The um, one other point I wanted to make about medications is if you could, at Dr. Lewis's office and at Cannonsburg Hospital, they have these beautiful little cards that you can fill out with your name of the prescription and the dosing. If you could carry that around with you, it's so very important because you'll come to the surgeon's office, my office, and just as she said, you know, people, I'm on this drug for my heart, doc, and it's a real long name. So. I should have brought some of those <laughs> to show. Have we have them in our office as well. And it's just a medication record. It's the very drugs. important. Very important and, to know and, what drugs. Yeah, I, I would say probably, probably well, all the young folks aren't on very many medications, but uh, oh, I, yeah. um, probably about half of the people come in with a computerized list, which is very nice, that they update at least once a month, which is nice. Uh, I guess we've. I guess my office staff must badger the patients when they call. <laughs> Clearly, I think the way we need to know what. But uh, you know, it's medicines you're on, unless you're a healthcare provider and you can't remember. Then you ask your doctor, right? Exactly. Doc, what medicines am I on? Um, talked about the flu shot. Do you want to talk about uh, pneumonia shots, any of those other shots? That really yeah, going into the, yeah, the fall and winter season, along with flu shots and flu vaccinations, I always check on pneumonia vaccinations uh, for people in the proper age group. Again, the criteria are a little different for pneumonia vaccines. Um, everybody age 65 and older can get one paid for. If you're under 65 with a chronic health problem like heart disease or diabetes, again, it's also recommended. Um, any pulmonary disease such as asthma, emphysema, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, all should get shots yearly and pneumonia vaccines every five years. And again, if you're not sure if you should get one, I'm a big believer in vaccines. I think they keep people healthier, keep people out of the hospital, prevent the spread of disease. And I think a lot of people are afraid of immunizations. Um, they feel they're not going to get any benefit from them, it's going to work. I got the flu shot, it gave me the flu. <laughs> it's, that's probably the most common excuse I get. That's but what it's impossible but I'm a to surgeon. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible to get the, get the flu from the flu shot. But uh, years ago, there is some truth to that, that the old, in the old days, you could have, but not anymore. As a surgeon, I tell people I'm, I'm not really a medical doctor much. <laughs> anymore. I'm just a surgeon. Highly skilled technician. Um, um, herpes zoster. What I say. Is there, is, that, is there an immunization for that also, or? One of the newest vaccines available for um, for adults okay. ages 60 and over. It's basically just a chickenpox booster. So I have a lot of people coming in to ask for that. There have been some media coverage of that as well in the papers. Okay. But right now, the now, we are out of that. The manufacturer, it's on back order. So the herpes zoster. National other, back order. Exactly. We can't even get we'll it. We'll see what we can. Maybe Congress can fix that. Too. <laughs> maybe. But yes. Uh, okay. It's a good shot. Good vaccine to get. Okay. Doc, you had a great show tonight. Thank you very much for coming. Dr. Jennifer Lewis, uh, the number will flash on the screen one more time. Give us a call. Give her a call specifically. Stop smoking, slow down, don't drink. <laughs> and See get you your next flu time. shot. And get your flu <laughs> shot. <laughs>